can measuring alkalinity be such a challenge? Watch this video to find out and avoid the issue I have just had. For the past five months, this tank has been on the up. And if you've seen my latest video, I've been really, really pleased with how it's actually maturing. I test every week. I change the water every week, usually three times. So five litre, five litre, and a 10 litre. And that has been really successful so far on this tank. I've also been adding new coals to the tank and they've adjusted well, they're coloured up. I'm really, really happy with how it's going. And of course, then one day, you look at your tank, and this goniopora here looks a bit like a golf ball. And those people who've got goniopora know if you can see a goniopora under full light when it should be open, and looks like a golf ball, there's problems. But what you shouldn't do is if you've got one coal out of your whole tank that's not looking too good, you shouldn't have a knee-jerk reaction and start to change things. So what I actually did, I used my test kits, and there was nothing out of the ordinary. Everything had been as it was. Lucky enough, I had an ICP in reserve, and what I tend to do is, I have an ICP every three or four months, or if I've got a problem. So I sent the ICP off on the Saturday. They got it on the Tuesday. I was totally surprised to see my alkalinity from the ICP at 5.9. Yes, 5.9. As you see from these readings, they're about 9 and then it spikes up to 11. How can I have two very different readings? On the one hand, 5.79, on the, on the other, it's 9 and now it's touching 11. That does not make sense. I've been holding this hobby for over 10 years and that has never happened where an ICP has been so wildly different to my test kits. Now I get that test kits can be inaccurate, but that much difference? So anyway, I contacted Jose, who's from Reefs Elements. I met him at Love to Reef, he was a uh, speaker. And I asked him, could he, re could he possibly retest it, just in case there was you know, an error with calibration or something like that. Anyway, he'd done some more tests, and he came back and said, yes, it was accurate, it was 5.79. So then I've done some digging, because I'm thinking, I don't understand. And I spoke to my LFS, and also looked online. And actually, your test kits, the reagent can go off. Now, it's not out of date. It's uh, July 2025. I have three tanks, which basically means I'm testing three times a week. So it's not an old test kit. However, it is down to probably the last 10 millilitres. So when I've been doing some research on this, you can get air into the reagent, and that could spoil it. So maybe that was the problem. All I can say is I'm really glad I'd done an ICP. Because if I hadn't, what would have happened to that? I would have thought my alkalinity was okay. I'm not actually dosing on this tank at all, although I, the odd bit of manganese I do, and also magnesium. But I've been relying on alkalinity, and as I put more coals into this tank, and it's probably about three quarters full by now, the alkalinity take up will be higher. These coals are relatively new in this tank. Most of these coals haven't been in here for six months yet. So as they settle, when they start to establish themselves, they'll start to grow, and the alkalinity will go up and up and up. So whether that's the cause of the goniopora, actually going like a golf ball, I don't know. But it has opened my eyes a little bit to taking more, paying more attention to my test kits. When they get down to the last line of it, reagent, then maybe buying a new test kit and using that one, and then maybe flipping between the two if I'm getting similar results. But it just shows you how much we rely on test kits, and they're not always accurate. So I think having an ICP and doing ICP on a regular basis, whether it's a nano like this tank or you've got a 1200 litre tank, I think is really, really important. Just to do that safety net that actually maybe your, your test kit is spoiled, maybe it's a bad batch, or maybe you're doing it incorrectly. I've been using the Red Sea Alkalinity for about 10 years on all of my tanks, so I know how to use it and I've doubled and I've triple checked the instructions just to make sure I'm doing it correctly, so there's nothing wrong with that. 
Do I blame the test kit? No, because I've been using it and I think it's been fine. But I don't know 100%. Yet, it's shown as 5.79. I've now bought another test kit and this is about a week ago. I've been dosing all for reef into this tank. And according to this new test kit, I'm up to seven, which probably is about right, considering I'm now dosing as well as doing my water changes. As for the goniopora, I thought I'd lost it. Because when you read up, when you see a goniopora, you get a golf ball look, you know it's on its way out. However, it is beginning to perk up. And as I look at it now, it is, all of the polyps are out, and it's probably about five millimeters extended. Now looking at the picture, they were probably nearer to five or six centimeters or, or four inches, I would say. So it was doing really, really well. But for now, fingers crossed, it looks like it might be on the up. Speak too soon, you never know. But that's the tale of my latest woe. Uh, if you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. And why not subscribe to the channel? I'll be doing future videos on this tank and see how the goniopora is getting on. Uh, and as you can see, there's another goniopora I've put in the tank in there, a huge one. Um, well, actually, it's a huge one because it's extended. I can't know how much it's extended by in a short period of time it's, um, it's gone now. I've also added a couple more coals in the tank as well. So that may be my next update in this tank. But for now, thank you for watching.